Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about thyroid supplements, but specifically we're gonna be focusing on how thyroid supplements work and what they do inside your body and how they're helping your thyroid to function. If you were to ask an endocrinologist or another type of conventionally trained doctor, do thyroid supplements work? Their answer would be no. They would tell you that thyroid supplements do not work and they would tell you that the only way to improve your thyroid is with the use of thyroid medication like levothyroxine or Synthroid. But that isn't actually true. There are many ways that you can support your thyroid, including with the use of supplements. And we're gonna be talking about how you can do that today. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs, and I help people who have thyroid problems, people who have hormone imbalances, and of course, help people who need to lose weight. But today is really about the thyroid, and specifically, we're going to be talking about, or touching base on, um, how thyroid supplements are working inside your body when you take them. So um, if you don't know, I have a lot of thyroid supplements. Um, I also have another, I have a wide range of supplements that help with other issues such as hormone imbalances and so on. So I have a lot of familiarity with what these things are doing inside the body. So let's talk about this briefly. So one of the first things that thyroid supplements do is they can provide building blocks as a substrate for the production of thyroid hormone. Okay, if that's a little confusing, let me break it down. So basically what is happening is your thyroid, this is supposed to be a thyroid, not a very good one. Your thyroid is supposed to pump out thyroid hormone, right? So it's pumping out T4 and a little bit of T3. Now, in order to do that, by the way, T4 and T3 are your thyroid hormones. But in order to do that, it must have the right building blocks to produce those thyroid hormones. In fact, one of the most important building blocks is iodine, right? If you don't have iodine, you cannot produce enough thyroid hormone. So what you can do, and this is well known by the way, if you just if you have iodine deficiency, your thyroid hormone hormone numbers will go down and you will develop hypo or low thyroid problems or hypothyroidism. Now, if you provide your body with iodine, iodine through supplement form, it allows your body to have the substrate to produce that thyroid hormone. Iodine isn't the only um, uh, nutrient required to produce thyroid hormone, but it is probably one of the most important ones and mo most well known. So as an example, that's how your body taking supplements can help your body produce more thyroid hormone. Okay, but that's not all because there are different other steps as well in the body that still can be helpful to thyroid patients. So that's number one. Number two is that it can assist in something called T4 to T3 conversion. Now, this is the process by which your body takes T4 and it changes it slightly, it actually cleaves off a little bit of an iodine, and it turns that into T3. Now, T3 is the most biologically active thyroid hormone and it is the, the thyroid hormone that you could, should concern yourself with. It is more important than T4 you know, by two or 300 times. So you want as much T3 as possible. Now your body produces some T3 naturally, but the majority of it is produced via this conversion method. Now what you can do is there are actually many enzymes and proteins which help this process go along. There are also things which can negatively inhibit it, okay? So it can slow it down. Now you can take certain supplements, including things like zinc um, and selenium. These are just a couple examples, but there are others which can actually help this process work more smoothly. Okay, so it can go, it can help that process go quicker, it can help your body produce more T3, and it will help you have more of that biologically active um, uh, thyroid hormone in your body. Now, a lot of thyroid patients are zinc and selenium deficient, meaning they do not have enough of these nutrients. And if you don't have enough of these nutrients, it's not like this process will just completely stall or stop. It still works, it just doesn't work as well. But if you were to replace that deficiency of zinc or replace that deficiency of selenium using things like thyroid supplements, then you would give your body what it needs to help that process go along. So that's another example of how thyroid supplements are helping your body. They can actually help your body produce more T3 via two ways, by the way. So they can do that through the conversion process or they can help your thyroid hormone directly produce it by providing the substrate for thyroid hormone. So these are just two examples so far. Number three is that they can support thyroid cellular activity, okay? So like any other hormone in your body, the hormone can only work if it actually can get into the cell and do its job, turn on the receptor or latch onto the receptor, change whatever it is. In this case for thyroid hormone, it's um, genetic transcription, so it's actually influ influencing the nucleus of the cell. Other hormones don't work that way, but, but uh, thyroid hormone does. But it only works if it actually gets into the cell. Now, this is important if you've ever heard of anything called insulin resistance. So that just means that there is a resistance at the cellular level to the hormone you're talking about. In the case of insulin, it means that insulin isn't working as well you know, on the cell itself, and so the insulin isn't able to do its job as well. Now, this same process can occur in thyroid patients, okay? You can have thyroid hormone resistance, meaning that even if your body is producing enough T4 and T3 thyroid hormone, even if your body is converting that T4 to T3, um, or that T4 to T3 to help, that your, the cells are still having a problem allowing it to get in and turn on genetic transcriptions, change your DNA, and produce the enzymes and proteins that you need. 
nutrients can help this process um, along by providing nutrients which are required to help with that cellular activity. These include certain fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin E, which again, a lot of thyroid patients are deficient in. So um, we'll just give a couple examples here, but vitamin A and vitamin E. Um, this would be an example of nutrients which can help that help your body become sensitive to that thyroid hormone to help the cells actually use it to do its job. Again, you can do everything right, but if this one step is impaired, then it could impair your thyroid function by 10 to 15% or so on. And you can imagine that this can start to stack up. If you have problems with conversion, that's another five to 10%. If you have problems with iodine deficiency or something similar, that's another five to 10%. So you have five to 10% here, five to 10% there, five to 10% here. All of a sudden now, your nutrient deficiencies are providing a significant barrier to how you're feeling because you cannot produce and you cannot use the thyroid hormone um, that your body would otherwise be able to use. So that's number three. Number four is that they support other organs and tissues. Okay, so I want you to think about this. Thyroid hormone does not work in a vacuum. It's not like your body just produces the thyroid hormone, it goes into a cell and it works just fine. There are other tissues and other organs which are required um, to help thyroid hormone do its job and to help it function. Um, or alternatively, another way to think about this is that if you have problems in other systems in your body or other nutrient deficiencies, they can slow or drag down your thyroid. So an example of this would be your adrenal system or your cortisol. So cortisol and your thyroid hormone or thyroid function in general, they're linked together. And if you have a problem in one, it will necessarily drag down the other. So a lot of people have thyroid problems, which then drag down their cortisol or vice versa. You can have cortisol problems, which drag down your thyroid. Another example is your gut. So a huge portion of thyroid conversion, which we talked about in number two, about 20%, depending on which study you look at, occurs inside the gut. So if you have any sort of gut inflammatory condition, irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, candida or fungal overgrowth, all of these conditions can impact thyroid function in an indirect way. So what you can do is you can actually take supplements to help those tissues, which will then indirectly help your thyroid. So I have a lot of supplements which do this as well. Things like probiotics, things like fish oil. Probiotics help your gut, which can help this conversion process. Fish oil can help reduce inflammation, which can help T4 to T3 conversion. Um, and there are lots of other examples, but this is just a, a couple of these. Now, another important thing that I want you to realize is that this applies to pretty much all thyroid patients, including those people who do not have a thyroid. I get tons of questions who say, this is great. You're talking about people who don't, who have low thyroid function, but what about us? What about the people who do not have a thyroid? Guess what? All this still applies with the exception of number one. Since you cannot produce thyroid hormone anymore, um, it's not as important, even though iodine still is important in other tissues, by the way, it's an important point, but you still need to convert that T4 to T3, even if you're taking thyroid medication, your cells still need to be able to use and activate that thyroid hormone. And also you can support other tissues. You still have, a, even if your thyroid's been removed, you still have gut, a gut, right? You still have, you still have to worry about inflammation and so on. So these things still are important. And this is just a couple examples of how this is working. This is not an, an exhaustive list, but I wanted to explain just in a little bit of detail how thyroid supplements are doing their job and how they can be effective. So the next time if you go into your, to talk to your doctor and your doctor says, no, those supplements don't work. Don't even bother. Don't even, don't even think about getting any supplements. It's not going to do anything. You can say, well, what about this? What about inflammation? What about my gut? What about my liver? That's another important aspect. What about my kidneys? All of these things are involved in thyroid hormone function in some way, either directly or indirectly. So this might have been a little confusing to you guys, but if you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. Um, I'll answer them at, if I can. I'll try and get to all of them. I'm not able to get to all of them, but I try to get to as many as I can. Also, if you haven't already, be sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information just like this, all designed to help people like you who have thyroid problems. So make sure you get that. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.